Welcome to Literary Insights. This is the summary of the book Win Every Argument, The Art of Debating, Persuading, and Public Speaking with Mehdi Hassan. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and liking this video. 1. Pathos, appealing to emotions, is more persuasive than logos, logical reasoning alone. Emotions significantly impact how we make judgments and decisions. 2. Neuroscience research shows that emotions affect how quickly we decide, how well we remember information, and even our rationality. Emotions operate at a subconscious level. 3. Studies found that people with damage to emotional centers of the brain had trouble making even simple decisions and lacked empathy. Emotions are essential for guiding decision making. 4. To use pathos, tell emotional stories about individuals rather than statistics about groups. Stories align our brains and spread ideas effectively. Most conversations involve sharing stories. 5. Stories of single victims elicit more emotion and action than statistics about many victims. They allow us to feel the pain of individuals and connect with the storyteller. 6. Pathos and storytelling should be combined with facts and logic to persuade. Emotion fuels reason, not vice versa. Anecdotes about people in need have a strong impact. 7. Examples of using pathos include telling relatable stories, using emotional language and imagery, discussing how an issue impacts real people, and showing passion in your arguments. 8. In contrast, relying only on logos, facts, and logic often fails to persuade because people decide based on emotions, not rationality alone. Ethos, credibility, also has limits. 9. To change minds, make people care by giving them a reason to feel invested in your position. Help them understand why it matters on a human level. Facts inform, but emotions inspire action. In summary, the most compelling arguments effectively combine pathos, logos, and ethos. Appeal to emotion and logic, establish credibility, make a human connection, and give a persuasive vision for the future. Ad hominem arguments are personal attacks against an opponent instead of their actual argument. They are usually considered logical fallacies and illegitimate debate tactics. However, ad hominem attacks can be persuasive and effective. They undermine an opponent's credibility and ethos, which is a key part of persuasion. Calling into question an opponent's character or motives can stick with an audience. There are three main types of ad hominem arguments. 1. Abusive, name-calling, and personal insults, e.g. calling someone crooked or racist. This can damage an opponent's reputation and credibility. 2. Circumstantial, arguing an opponent's view is motivated by personal bias or circumstances, e.g. claiming a study was funded by special interests. This casts doubt on the opponent and their motivations. 3. Two quoque, highlighting an opponent's hypocrisy or inconsistency, e.g. noting they argue against something they have supported in their own lives. This undermines their moral authority and credibility. While ad hominem attacks are logically fallacious, they can be rhetorically effective. They tap into human intuitions about character, motivation, and credibility. Powerful rhetoricians have used them to gain advantages over opponents. A mix of arguments, some addressing issues and some targeting opponents, may be most persuasive. Relying solely on ad hominem attacks is not effective, but deploying them judiciously at the right time can work. We should not dismiss ad hominem tactics entirely, as they have a long historical pedigree and continue to be used by effective rhetoricians and persuaders today. However, they need to be used responsibly and as part of a broader persuasive strategy. The key is using ad hominem arguments judiciously and avoiding relying only on personal insults. A balanced combination of arguments, some focused on issues, some on opponents, is most persuasive. Ad hominem arguments, which attack a person rather than their actual position, are often considered logical fallacies. However, they can be effective persuasive techniques when used judiciously in some contexts. The three strategies for using ad hominem are challenge an opponent's character, challenge their credentials and expertise, and challenge contradictions in their claims or statements over time. These strategies undermine an opponent's credibility and authority.
Ad hominem should be used to supplement logical arguments and evidence, not replace them. They work best when tied directly to flaws in an opponent's position. Expect counterattacks when using them and be ready to defend yourself. Listening well, both critically and empathetically, is crucial for effective communication and debate. Critical listening helps identify weaknesses and falsehoods in an opponent's argument. Empathetic listening builds connection with your audience. To listen well, focus fully on the speaker, take notes, ask follow-up questions, be open-minded, evaluate the logic and evidence. Listening skills take effort to develop but are essential for persuasion. Humor and laughter help build rapport and open audiences to persuasion. They capture attention, release tension, and make people receptive to your message. Wit and humor allow you to connect with an audience and gain their support. Examples of good listeners include Nelson Mandela, who learned his opponent's language and tried to find consensus, and Bill Clinton, who showed empathy for questioners in debates. George H.W. Bush was criticized for seeming bored, impatient, and lacking empathy in debates. Ancient rhetoricians like Aristotle and Cicero viewed humor and laughter as useful for persuasion. Audiences appreciate and connect more with speakers who make them laugh. Laughter is a universal human experience. The key argument is that certain techniques often considered logically problematic, like ad hominem arguments and humor, can actually be quite effective for persuasion when used strategically. And listening well, both critically and empathetically, is fundamental to being persuasive. Rhetoric is as much about making an emotional connection as it is crafting logical arguments. Here's the summary. Technique 1. Conceding Yielding some points to seem reasonable, then refuting key arguments. Strength disarms opponent and builds credibility. Weakness can concede too much. Only concede peripheral points. Technique 2. Preemption. Anticipating and rebutting arguments before they're made. Strength puts opponent on defensive and frames debate in your terms. Weakness can seem like arguing against imaginary opponents if overused. Only preempt likely arguments. Technique 3. Reframing. Redefining terms of debate or reinterpreting a question. Strength turns debate to your advantage when original framing unfavorable. Weakness. New framing must still be reasonable and logically connected to topic. Don't distort meaning. General principles. Use techniques judiciously and avoid over-reliance on anyone. This prevents them from seeming formulaic or irrational. Concessions, preemptions, and reframes must be logically connected to the core topic and based on reasonable inferences. Don't distort meaning or make leaps of logic. Match technique to situation. Consider which arguments are likely. How broad or narrow is the original framing? How much yielding is strategic without damaging your position? Use techniques to complement your arguments, not as substitutes for them. Your reasoning and evidence are still the foundations of a persuasive case. These techniques are supplemental. Practice these techniques to apply them instinctively when the opportunity arises. But don't force their use where they don't naturally fit. Let your strategic sense develop over time. The goal is to argue as reasonably, flexibly, and compellingly as possible. Mastering these techniques helps you gain strategic advantage while still seeming principled. But you must apply them ethically and in moderation. The key benefit of learning these techniques is gaining the strategic advantage in argument while still being, or seeming, reasonable and open-minded. But they must be applied judiciously, ethically, and for the right reasons to be effectively persuasive. Mastery takes practice. Use reframing judiciously. Only deploy it when needed to counter key arguments in a persuasive, reasonable way. Overusing rhetorical techniques can seem evasive or obstructionist. Reframing involves reinterpreting your opponent's arguments or positions in a way that is more favorable to your own perspective. It allows you to pivot the discussion to your advantage without directly contradicting the other person. Example, if an opponent says raising the minimum wage will destroy businesses, you could reframe it as raising the minimum wage will lift hardworking families out of poverty. 
This flips the argument to focus on the benefits to workers rather than costs to businesses. Reframing works best when it feels like a natural part of the discussion, not an obvious debate trick. Keep your reframed arguments logically coherent and consistent. And be prepared for your opponent to call out your reframing attempts. Have counterarguments ready to support your position. While a powerful tool, reframing must be used judiciously. Overusing it makes your rhetoric seem evasive, underhanded, or stretching the truth. Reframing is most persuasive when balanced with directly addressing your opponent's actual arguments. Your audience will recognize when you rely too heavily on reframing. Examples of good reframing Calling for reduced government spending on social programs, investing in programs that support communities. Describing illegal immigrants as lawbreakers, recognizing immigrants seeking asylum or opportunity. Labeling a policy as government overreach, protecting people's rights and well-being. Attacking your opponent, focusing the debate on ideas and issues, not individuals. Describing taxes as a burden paying one's fair share to fund important priorities. The key message is that remaining calm and composed is the most effective response in charged or confrontational situations. Getting angry or emotional typically undermines your ability to think clearly and communicate persuasively. It also allows the other person to provoke you further and gain control of the interaction. Some tips for staying calm. 1. Practice controlled breathing. Taking deep, slow breaths activates your body's calming mechanisms and helps you stay focused. 2. Count slowly to 10. This can help shift your mind from an emotional to a more rational state so you can respond thoughtfully. 3. Focus on listening. Pay close attention to what the other person is saying. This occupies your mind and prevents you from becoming reactive. It also ensures you understand their perspective fully before responding. 4. Respond with facts and questions. Rather than attack someone's character or motive, focus on addressing the substance of their arguments or claims with facts and logical reasoning. Asking clarifying questions is also constructive. 5. Take the high road. Do not sink to the level of personal insults or disrespect. Remain dignified and courteous, even if the other party does not. Your composure and restraint will strengthen your position. The key takeaway is that in confrontational situations, the ability to remain calm and rational is what allows us to make a persuasive case, reduce tensions, and move discussions in a more constructive direction. Responding with anger or aggression, on the other hand, usually only makes the situation worse. With practice, staying calm under pressure is a skill that can be strengthened. The author spent years dutifully doing homework as a researcher for a journalist, helping create epic study guides called The Document to Prepare for Interviews. These homework packets were so lengthy and detailed, they made war and peace look like a children's pop-up book. The author argues that preparation turns you into a walking, talking document yourself, armed with facts and ready for any argument that comes your way. Like a Boy Scout, always be prepared. Unless you want to end up like Napoleon marching into Moscow without a coat, your argument will end in disaster. To prepare, the author recommends. Brainstorming. Come up with ideas like a hyperactive third grader chugging Red Bull. Go for quantity, not quality. Throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. You can toss out the silly ideas later. Researching the past. Take a stroll down memory lane. Everything comes from something, so find out what. Dig up those dusty old facts like an overeager archaeology student. Role-playing, have an argument with yourself in front of the mirror. Anticipate questions from imaginary foes and prepare witty comebacks in advance. Pretend you're a method actor getting into character. In summary, do your homework or your argument will be as pointless as rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Prepare like the fate of the free world depends on it. Develop an informed opinion or don't have one at all. You are not entitled to ignorance. So study hard, young grasshopper. Sharpen that mind and wield knowledge like a weapon. Now go forth and educate the masses. Cue epic music and close curtain. Connecting emotionally with your audience is key to persuading them. Share personal stories and experiences to build empathy and understanding. 
Stories are more memorable and impactful than facts alone. Tailor your presentation to your specific audience and venue. There is no one-size-fits-all approach. Do your research to understand your audience and what will resonate with them. Capture the audience's attention right away. Begin with a provocative statement or story. Address knowledge gaps and inspire curiosity. Make a personal connection by referring to audience members by name. Emotion and reasoning are deeply connected in the brain and both are essential for persuasion. We make decisions based on how we feel, not just what we think. Share emotions as well as facts. When a speaker connects emotionally with an audience, a brain-to-brain -brain coupling can form. Audiences mirror the emotional rhythms and energy of an engaging speaker. This fosters understanding and agreement. According to Aristotle, persuasion requires ethos, credibility, pathos, emotion, and logos, logic. While facts matter, emotions move audiences. Appeal to both reason and emotion. The case of Eliot shows that emotions are essential for judgment and decision-making. Facts alone do not necessarily lead to rational conclusions. Emotion gives facts meaning and relevance. Speak confidently and deliberately, building to a climax. Use rhetorical devices for impact and memorability. Have a well-formed conclusion that inspires action. Avoid common mistakes like introducing new arguments at the end or apologizing for the length. Follow the contour of beginning, middle, and end. Recap main points and build evidence to an inescapable conclusion. End emotionally to maximize effect. Issue a call to action when appropriate. In summary, connecting with your audience emotionally is the key to persuading them. A compelling speech uses ethos, pathos, and logos, appealing to both reason and emotion through facts, stories, and a confident delivery. Tailor your approach to your audience and occasion. Capture attention, build empathy, and end with impact for maximum persuasion. The key points around practice and preparation for effective public speaking are Practice and repetition, many great orators engaged in extensive practice and rehearsal. Speeches that seem spontaneous are often the result of diligent preparation. Revising and rewriting, continually revising and improving speeches leads to mastery. Churchill and King would revise speeches extensively to achieve the desired effect. Focus on delivery, how you deliver a speech, including body language, tone, pacing, and nonverbal communication, is as important as the content. Practice in front of a mirror or on video to improve. Build confidence. Confidence comes from preparation and competence. Seizing opportunities to speak, pushing out of your comfort zone, and faking confidence until you feel it can help build self-assurance. Confidence breeds more confidence. Appearing confident. Confidence makes any speaker and argument seem more persuasive, even if based more on style than substance. But true confidence comes from hard work and skill, not just charisma. Spread confidence. Confidence spreads between speaker and audience. An engaged, enthusiastic speaker who appears self-assured wins over an audience and makes any argument more compelling. But confidence must be built on a foundation of credibility and competence. In summary, mastery of public speaking is the result of diligent preparation and continual practice. How arguments and ideas are delivered is as important as the substance. Confidence, charisma, and appearance can make weak arguments seem strong, but credibility comes from knowledge and skill. Great oratory is a craft to hone through determined effort and experience. With work, confidence in public speaking can become second nature. To ensure your nonverbals are enhancing your message. Practice continuously. Speaking in front of others as much as possible builds your skills through experience. Live practice and experience cannot be replaced. Seek feedback. Learning from mistakes and criticism from others helps you improve. Progress requires the support of others. Have passion. Enthusiasm for your topic fuels energy that resonates with audiences. Passion and discipline together are powerful. Body language. Engage your audience through eye contact, gestures, movement, and facial expressions. Your body language and tone of voice matter more than your words alone. 
vary your delivery. Change your tone, pace, and volume for effect. Pause for impact. A dynamic delivery keeps audiences engaged. Reduce fillers and nerves. Minimize filler words like um and like. Avoid jittery movements and pacing. Listen actively. These habits damage your credibility. Strong opening and close. Capture interest immediately. End memorably by reinforcing your key message. The opening and ending are what audiences recall most. Be ready for Q&A, listen, stay poised, and do not get defensive. Provide factual responses. Admit if you don't know an answer. Promote open discussion. Authenticity. Speak genuinely and audiences will connect. Believe in your message to be convincing. Your authentic passion will shine through. In summary, mastery requires continuous effort across many areas, technical and non-technical. Experience, learning, and growth over time combine with natural ability. Even the most gifted continue practicing to strengthen their skills. With determination, you can become a persuasive communicator able to move and inspire audiences. In summary, the keys to winning an argument and persuading others are, do your research, anticipate counterarguments, focus on common ground, be concise yet passionate, and connect with your audience. Mastering these skills will allow you to make a convincing case on any issue. Though the challenges we face seem great, I am hopeful for the future. When we come together, listen to different perspectives, and have genuine debates focused on solutions rather than attacks, we can solve any problem. Our shared humanity is greater than any disagreement. We all want the same basic things, health, happiness, and security for our loved ones. Let's raise the level of discourse in this country. Let's debate with empathy, understand with compassion, and persuade with truth and passion. We have so much untapped potential when we tap into our shared hopes rather than our differences. I know that if we work to improve how we communicate and resolve our conflicts, the future will be bright. Our best days are still ahead.